This is the original Ender 3, the same unit I reviewed back in 2018. And this is another Ender 3 that I bought in 2022. And this is yet another Ender 3 I bought just a few weeks ago. They're essentially identical. And in this video, I'll show you why the Ender 3 is one of the most popular 3D printers of all time, why I still use mine all the time, and why you shouldn't buy one. Let's get started. Before we get into it, I just want to say I sat on releasing this video for ages, as you can tell by my hairstyle. But with the latest release of the Ender 3 V3 from Creality and no apparent change to their backlog of older machines, I think it's really important to make this video and just announce to everyone that it's time to move on. There are better machines to use than the original Ender 3 if you're just getting into 3D printing. And hopefully this video will outline why. Picture this, the year is 2015 and 3D printing companies all around the world are throwing crap at the wall to see what sticks. They have no idea what makes a good 3D printer, but the space is incredibly hot and there's money to be made. As a result, there is a massive variety of printer designs with each company trying their hand at creating the next must have unit. Some really know what they're doing, but many really don't. And let me tell you, some of these designs were wild. While some companies experiment with unusual features and aesthetics in an attempt to differentiate themselves, buyers are only really interested in two things, print volume and price. As such, we saw a huge fan base pop up around ultra low cost 3D printer kits, such as the Anet A8 and TiVo Tarantula, two of the hottest 3D printers of the time, pun intended. These machines weren't popular because they were reliable, user-friendly or printed well, Hell no, they were absolutely garbage and literally caught fire way too often. They were made by companies who took the open source designs and firmware made as part of the RepRap movement and then drove down the price as low as possible with inferior components and non-existent quality control. In fact, these machines were almost unusable from the factory without serious tweaking and modifications, but they were dirt cheap. The cheapest way of getting a 3D printer at the time by far and users took it upon themselves to make up for the terrible quality of the kits by forming communities who worked together to make them half decent machines with a huge variety of aftermarket mods and upgrades. If you're on a tight budget, but you wanted to get into 3D printing, this was the route you had to take. As all of this was going on, a little Chinese company was bubbling where in the background working on a different take on the hugely popular i3 style printed design, Creality or Shenzhen Creality 3D Technology Co. LTD, which was founded in 2014. Now, I can't find any info on their first ever 3D printer, but I do remember this little guy, the CR7. This little 3D printer kit with a cantilevered arm was cheap, small, and most importantly, not completely terrible. It's because they didn't try to take a mechanically complex design with a huge frame like the old MakerBot replicator, and cut costs elsewhere. Instead, they cut costs through massive simplification of the part count and complexity of the design. Most other budget 3D printers on the market at the time relied on a cheap laser cut acrylic or plywood for the frame with linear rods and bearings for the motion components. And there's only so cheap you can make all of those parts. But what Creality did is they combined the frame and the linear motion components using V-rollers and V-slot extrusion. Now let me be clear, Creality was not the first company to substitute linear rods with V-rollers and aluminum extrusion in a 3D printer, but to the best of my knowledge, they were the first to find huge success with it. And think about it, to make a bigger 3D printer, you can reuse all the same motion components and electronics, just use longer sections of extrusion. And in July 2016, boy did they go big with the release of the CR10. This machine offered a print volume of 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters in the Z-axis at a fraction of the price point of anything else on the market at the time, all through the magic of V-slot extrusion and rollers. This huge i3 style 3D printer was mechanically simple, making it easy to maintain and modify, which is good because it's with the CR10 that Creality's famous quality control became mildly apparent. They were growing so incredibly fast the price point was so very low, so they were moving a huge amount of machines. And some CR10s worked perfectly out of the box with minimal setup, while others had bowed glass beds, damaged extrusions of V-rollers, faulty plugs and connectors, or leaky hot ends. However, unless you got incredibly unlucky, 
These were basic budget 3D printers that mostly worked out of the box, but had plenty of room for improvement. So the Creality community was born, which for better or for worse, you turn to other users for help and not the company itself. Because yeah, good luck with getting any kind of customer service beyond maybe them sending you a spare part that you'd have to fit yourself should your machine be a lemon. The CR10 was massively popular, but the CR10 was also quite massive. And at around 500 bucks US, still quite a hard sell for many people looking to get into 3D printing on a tight budget. Creality needed a Goldilocks product, not too cheap, small and limited, but not too large and expensive, just enough so that it worked okay at the lowest price possible. Enter the Creality Ender 3, released in March 2018. Now Creality has had many, many other 3D printers on offer, but none have ever taken off like this sub $200 bed slinger did five years ago. So just in case you're one of the two people left in this hobby who don't know the specs of an original Ender 3, this is what it offers. A print volume of 220 by 220 by 250 in the Z, V-slot extrusion frame with V-rollers, a fully supported i3 style gantry, but only one Z-axis motor and lead screw, a Bowden style extruder with the motor and assembly mounted to the frame and pushing filament into the hot end through this long PTV tube, which extends through to the melt zone of the hot end and butts up against the nozzle. It has a print bed which is manually leveled using four spring-loaded screws, one in each corner, and an LCD display with click wheel and micro SD card slot for loading in the G-code. And well, that's it. Just the basics required to build a fairly solid 3D printer for a bargain price of just under $200 US. And it absolutely took off. On its own, the Ender 3 was an attractive enough package to entice literally millions into the hobby. But thanks to the hard work of Naomi Wu, Sexy Cyborg, who was Creality 3D's community liaison at the time, the Ender 3 went on to become fully open source. Much like many of the other 3D printers coming out of China at the time, the Ender 3 relies heavily on the hard work of the open source community to exist, like Marlin, the firmware that it runs on. Because of this, Naomi held Creality to task to give back according to the terms of the open source license and made the Ender 3 the first Oshua certified 3D printer to come out of China. And she really does not receive enough credit for this because it was this move that opened the floodgates of Ender 3 style 3D printers that shaped the 3D printing landscape that we know today, increasing affordability and accessibility. And I just wanna jump in here to say that Naomi appears to have been silenced uh, quite a few months ago now. She posted this on Twitter and there's been no apparent activity on her YouTube or Twitter page since, which is actually honestly devastating, Re regardless if you agree with her views or not. Um, it's actually really scary and I hope she's okay. And I'll link an article below outlining what is sort of going on there. There's no denying that Naomi did a huge amount for the 3D printing community, so everyone should be questioning where she is. And I honestly hope she's okay. Unless you get stung by some bad quality control, the Ender 3 is a decent workhorse right out of the box. And the parts haven't really changed all these years later. And here's the thing, the Ender 3 can work well, but it's cut back to such a degree that it doesn't take much to stuff one up. For example, getting the bed level and nozzle height correct is an art in itself. Most frustratingly, however, the Ender 3 just has some really terrible design decisions that were made partly with the price point in mind, that have persisted all of these years because these two machines are almost identical even though there's about five years separating them after the release. So what are the main issues with the Ender 3? Well, if you ignore quality control for the moment, there are three main ones that come to mind. One, the spring-loaded bed relies on the Z-axis limit switch for homing and it has an injection molded bump, which means the Z-axis tends to home the nozzle too far away from the bed to allow for reliable first layer height. You run out of spring length on one corner invariably and I usually cut this knob off, move it down just a few millimeters or so for a good, nice, solid first layer, but I don't know why this has never changed. Two, the V-rollers need to be correctly tensioned, and if you have them too tight, they actually develop flat spots that leave artifacts on the print surface. And too loose, the gantry, because it's essentially cantilevered, will sag, resulting in garbage quality prints overall. The belts also need to be correctly tensioned or the prints will be inaccurate, and I've found the easiest way to do this is to lever the idle of pulley with a large flathead screwdriver. Not the most elegant solution indeed. And three, the Bowden PTFE tube needs to be cut flush and pushed all the way down into the hot end, right into the melt zone, ensuring that it can't move in the coupler or you'll get horrible extrusion accuracy and stringing. This was actually what the biggest issue was with my original Ender 3 when it arrived. 
the couplers were faulty. And it's also worth noting that this PTFE tube is in the melt zone, which is heated to high temperatures. And if you try to print stuff like PTG, you can heat it too much and make it start releasing nasty fumes. So that's not a great design decision either. There are also smaller annoyances like realizing you can't print the full extent of the print bed or you hit the clips that hold the print bed in place or how easy it is to lose your micro SD card into the printer if you miss the slot because it's just a big gap there underneath it. I can't tell you the number of posts I've seen relating to any number of these problems which resulted in someone giving up on their dreams of using a 3D printer which in the end wasn't really their fault. And I totally get it. If I bought a keyboard like the ones behind me, expecting to use them to make fun sounds and melodies, but I just had to spend all of my time repairing and tuning them instead, well, I probably would give up on them as well. So with all of that, why the heck do I still use an Ender 3 for the bulk of my tutorials and model printing? Well, if you can get past the design flaws and have a bit of patience and luck, you can print models like this. These prints were all done on an entirely stock Ender 3 with no modifications whatsoever beyond slicer tweaks using Prusa Slicer. And yes, I will share my profiles in the video description below. It's not a good 3D printer, and it's certainly not a fast 3D printer. The Ender 3 represents the bulk of what printers exist in the 3D printing community today, and the bulk of what printers are capable of reproducing in the community. It is, after all, one of the most popular machines ever sold of all time, and I love to create and share models that people can reproduce themselves on their own printers. So I use the Ender 3 as a good baseline. If my models are reproducible on this, then I know they'll probably work on the machine that you have, unless it's somehow worse, in which case, I'm really sorry. <laughs> but this is where any praise for Creality and the Ender 3 ends, because if you're looking for a 3D printer to empower your own creativity, don't buy this. In fact, it's a joke that Creality even sells it anymore. Rant time. If you go to Creality's website, you'll find no less than eight Ender 3 variations for sale, including the original Ender 3. Instead of discontinuing older models to bring out new and improved ones, Creality simply changes a few things and releases new versions of the same old tired concept. And it absolutely pisses me off. An Ender 3 with a touch screen? Oh, that's the Ender 3 V2. But it doesn't have auto bed leveling, that's the Neo. But it doesn't have a direct drive extruder, that's the Ender 3 S1. It's literally the same approach that Colgate does to flood the supermarket shelves with different kinds of toothpaste, but they're all kind of the same thing. It actually makes them untouchable in terms of producing meaningful reviews, because what I'm reviewing is unlikely to be exactly what you're going to end up buying. There's too many variations. And in fact, I reckon that's probably why the original is still sold, because my old reviews point to it, and they think, oh, well, it might result in a sale. We'll just keep selling them. What's worse is that Creality kind of set the bar what a successful 3D printing company should be, and they resulted in a tidal wave of clones over the past few years with zero differentiation other than price points and how many influences these companies could make show their printers off. These machines were usually sent to people like myself, full of pre-production and quality control issues, and by the time a meaningful test cycle was completed, which can be months, they would tell us, oh, they've updated to the latest version and those issues are fixed and then move on to the latest version of their Bedslinger i3 Ender 3 thing. <laughs> it's so frustrating. And the final nail in the coffin is the fact that these companies started using Kickstarter to launch these machines. Fully fledged, fully funded companies using a crowdfunding platform for little more than marketing and hype. Disgusting. Point is, it's not 2018 anymore. And if you're looking to get into 3D printing on a budget, there are so many better options if you can afford to spend just a little bit more money. Mesh bed leveling, for example, is one great way to overcome the learning curve of getting a perfect first layer that puts off so many newcomers. And it can be found in various Ender 3 versions like the Ender 3 V2 Neo, but also it's in machines like the Soval SV06, which um, I don't know, they discontinued their older versions to make room for their new better products. Clipper as well is creeping into Ender 3 style printers and it's making it really accessible to get into high speed 3D printing. And while they may not be perfect, it's a heck of a lot better than just getting an Arduino Mega welded into a control board and calling it a day like we used to do so many years ago. In my eyes, the fact that there's literally no difference between these two machines bought five years apart speaks volumes about Creality's attitude to actually making innovative products. I even tried to help Naomi out back in the day when she was their liaison to endorse like the fact she knew what she was talking about, to change some of their behaviors with an endorsement of a character, 
And yeah, it had zero change. And obviously this video wouldn't be complete without talking about Bamboo Labs and their absolute disruption of the space this year, which in my eyes was the final nail in the coffin for the original Ender 3 and its variants. Bamboo Labs stormed onto the scene with their machines that come ready to run out of the box, packed with features that just make them easier to use for people who want to use 3D printers as a tool and not a hobby. And Crowley clearly felt threatened because they quickly rushed out their competitor to the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon with the Creality K1, which came out too early and again was full of problems that influencers had to rectify. I've heard it's gotten better since then, but then stuff like this happens. So there are rubber feet on the bottom and it came with larger rubber feet. Oh, cool. Okay. So there you go, please stop recommending the Ender 3 as the perfect beginner 3D printer because it is not. It still is a fantastic platform for modifying and hacking and if you are experienced with 3D printing, electronics and you want to tinker, it is the best bang for buck platform you can get, which is why I bought a third one. So let me know in the comments below what you think. Do you agree with me or do you completely disagree? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And thank you for watching this video. Again, it's been a long time in the making. I sat on it. I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to release it, but yeah, I did. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you again very soon here on Maker's Muse. Bye.